Yo, fellas, if y'all want to see me wife a girl that looks like this, 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 or even this, tap in with my Instagram, man. My goal is 10K followers. If y'all active, I will follow back. Come on, y'all. I know we could do it, but hey, here go the vid. Well, most of you already know my story and how I got here. A kid from the hood that got cut and eventually made his high school team. While I was there, I faced a lot of trials. And somehow, I overcame them all. I ended up transferring and dominated at my new school. Everything that I got there, I worked for it. From player of the year to multiple D1 scholarships. I continued my career at Stanford and fought through adversity after going through two significant injuries one to my ankle and one to my hand. But all in all, I was able to handle business at the collegiate level. And a lot of people will say I left a legacy at Stanford. But now, it was time for the NBA journey. Yo, what's the word with y'all boys, man? Damn, I ain't seen y'all in a long time. But I peeped y'all was rocking with the first documentary about my life. So I figured why not continue it and talk about the NBA journey. For the OGs who was here in season one, you already know the drill. Make sure you watch the whole video because I don't want y'all missing any parts. And we gonna dive right into it. Now don't get me wrong, my family raised me right. And I've always been humble my whole life. But I can't fake it to y'all, man. Ever since I signed that contract, I've been getting that bag. After taking care of everything I needed to take care of, such as paying things off and giving money to my family members, I spent my bread on a new apartment downtown. Now y'all know I'm from the trenches, man. But me seeing this updated modern apartment, man, it was blowing me away like Angela White. The dual level also featured a nice bedroom downstairs. I ain't gonna lie, man. When Kalani came over, I ain't gonna lie. We gonna have to edit out that last 30 seconds. We got kids watching this. My fault, y'all. But basically, you get the point. It had all the nice features. Nice bathroom, bedroom, living space. I was living good. I had nothing to complain about. I know y'all remember my old car, the white Mitsubishi. Yeah, I had to get rid of that mug and cop the Batmobile. An all-black supercar. The car in the crib was my only two big purchases. I know y'all don't know, but once you make it to the league, you gotta manage your money well. When I wasn't practicing or working on my game, I was going to some meetings trying to lock in some brand deals. I ain't gonna lie, I met some weird people along the way. But it was all good, cause I was trying to secure even more paper. I ain't going out like Delonte West. Now y'all know I got drafted late in the first round of the Warriors. Since they had Steph and the crew, they sent me down to the G League to prove myself. Wasn't that many roster spots. If y'all know me by now, y'all should know I was locked in and ready to go. If I hooped, I could get a call up and then the real journey will begin. But let's get to the G League first. This world shall know pain. Who's about for himself for blood? And just like that, I was sort of in my first NBA game. I ain't gonna lie, the nerves and tension was high. But hey, I've been going through pressure all my life. But this was my dream. So it was really time for me to go out and show out. Now the first thing I immediately notice, the difference between college and the NBA, is the speed of the game. But y'all already know I was fast, and on my first possession, hey, I got my first NBA bucket. Even though it was a G League game, man, the crowd was packed, and there was a lot of energy in the building. We was feeling good, until we found out one of the opposing players got hurt. What made it even more messed up is it was kind of my fault. You see... I tried to close out when he was shooting his first shot, and it was similar to my injury at Stanford, 
That boy rolled that thing something crazy. But hey, man, prayers up to him. I hope he get well soon. Now, when you play in the NBA, it's a lot of freedom. So you already know I was going to that screen and roll, and this happened. Hey! Man, we back like we never left. But hey, man, the next possession, I ended up stepping through the lane and getting a nice dime to the center. I really wanted to showcase all of my skill, not just the scoring and athleticism. I could pass too. You already know I get rebounds. As y'all can see, the lay package ain't going nowhere as I hit a tough floater over two defenders. Now, this game was very low score, and I ain't going to lie. It was only 11-17 in the second quarter. But, hey, I figured I just needed to attack and get us going so we can get the blowout dub. You know I had to double it on the dunks. So then I figured, hey, why not triple it? Hey! A lot of analysts and people had a lot of stuff to say about my game. But one thing they can't deny, I was a nightmare in transition. Coming into the league, I knew that was my strong suit. So every time I got a defensive board, I was getting the ball up the floor and pushing it. But I ain't score that thing every time. I just get deep in the paint and then kick to a wide open teammate. Boom! I mentioned the speed of the game, but I also forgot to mention how physical everybody was in the NBA. I tried to go up for a lay, and man, this dude knocked me into the cameraman. I felt like an idiot, bro. That's the first time I've ever done something like that in the game. And Kalani was watching. <laughs> I was just praying that she didn't have me sleeping on the couch tonight. But anyway, the game plan to attack and transition was working. It seemed like every time I got a defensive board, I was pushing it and had a wide open lane. Hey! And next thing you know, they was getting blown out. Shout out to Autumn Falls. Late in the fourth, I hit him with a mean pop tart. Had them defenders looking stupid off the pump fake. And just like that, my first G League game was in the books. Just like Troy Bolton at a cookout, them boys never had a chance. I would be lying if I said I wasn't dog tired after the game. But hey, I was hooping though, y'all seen it. I ended up dropping 30 and 12, a double double in my first G League game. But hey, this next G League game is where things get real crazy. So after the first game, I had a convo with some of my teammates, and they was basically like, bruh, you don't even need to be here. So when you get the opportunity, go there and show out. So y'all already know what I had to do next. As Peter Griffin would say, oh, you dropped something. I got the steal on a PG, and then I went straight to the cup for a poster. Hey! Fast forward into the second quarter, I would end up getting the G League Player of the Week. Drove to the cup and... Damn. Damn! Oh my god! Man, the way I was dunking on people left and right, I was about to apply for the dunk contest this year. But I know y'all boys ain't think that was it. Shit, I kept attacking. Went to the lane again and... Hey. On the next possession, hit him with a mean crossover and once again... Hey. Now mid-second quarter, we were starting to pull away from this team. Y'all know the great saying, give up the ball, you get it back. And I ended up getting the and one bucket. Y'all already know what it is. It's 100% from the line. I ain't even got to show y'all nothing. I said, spin, move. Hit that boy with some mean. And then got the dunk right after. Toward the end of the game, they fought back and made it a four-point game. And I ain't going to lie, my teammates just told me to start taking over. I already had about 29 at that point, so I figured I just got to keep cooking. We ain't losing this game, though. I ain't doing none of that. Ended up getting a tough finish. And I ain't going to lie, man. I'm definitely going to get investigated after this game because I caught another body. Hey! Now, in the fourth quarter, it was at this moment I knew that them boys could not guard me for nothing. I mean, I honestly felt disrespected that the Warriors decided to send me to the G League. But I mean, I can't really blame them. They got Steph, Clay, Draymond, and the whole dynasty in that organization. But really, putting me on that team, it would be crazy. We mess around and go back to the NBA championship. Boo! I know y'all boys ain't think I went the whole game without shooting. Matter of fact, in the fourth quarter, I wanted to shoot. I was tired from all the dunks. Boo! Now with 30 seconds to go left in the game, I ended up channeling my Juju Watkins and got the last bucket to drop 51. <laughs> Dang, she fine, bro. And just like that, the game was over. 
another dub for our G League team, and it was a blowout win. And it was a statement game for me. I ended up dropping 51 and 11, and that was absolutely the last thing I expected from my first two G League games. I mean, it was difficult, bruh, and I definitely wasn't expecting to perform like that, but I was happy at the same time. Now, if you made it this far, you made it to the end. I appreciate y'all boys for sticking around. But look, man, two back-to-back -back double doubles, and one of them including a 51-point performance, y'all already knew I got a call up. But hey, man, wait till y'all see what team decided to call me up. My favorite player, Michael Jordan. So, Shot Town, what's the word with it? Hey, man. We about to go in here, put in some work, and we'll see how far this journey takes us. I'll see y'all in the next one. Yo, my boys, man. Happy to see y'all. Hey, we back with another episode, and if you've been here, you already know the deal, man. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and if you missed the last episode, go ahead and check it out so you caught up. But without further ado, I need to get y'all hip on everything that's been going down lately. So as y'all can see, man, this NBA life crazy, and it's all a business. One moment you in one state, and you could be across the world in another. So after a long talk with Kalani, we decided to rent a house in Chicago. And I ain't gonna lie, man, this mug was kinda nice. Had a nice view, nice backyard, and my favorite feature about the backyard was the pool. Me and Kalani was finna be like Uncle Elroy and Sugar. F. O. Sachi. But anyway, the crib wasn't that far from the facility, and it was in a nice secluded neighborhood, so I was cool with it. Aside from the house though, I was making a lot more big moves. Me and my brother went to a few different sit downs with some brand companies that was looking to sponsor me. I'm not gonna lie, the process took a while. When you dealing with stuff like this, you gotta make sure you get the best deal for yourself. And all in all, all of the brands had some good offers on the table. But at the end of the day, it all came down to what my decision was and what would fit best. And with me being in Chicago now, I think some of y'all boys seen this coming. Yes sir, your boy secured an endorsement deal with Jordan. And pretty soon, I was gonna have my own signature shoe. They posted me on the gram and all that. And on top of that, man, I secured a multi-year endorsement deal with Powerade. And before you knew it, I was playing my first official NBA game against SGA and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And y'all could probably guess I was definitely more nervous in this game than I was in the first G League game. I mean, this was on a whole different level. But y'all have known me for years now. You already know what I'm coming out here to do. I ain't playing no games with nobody. And just like that, I got my first NBA bucket, a poster dunk over the rookie Chet Holmgren. I told y'all boys I wasn't coming out here to play. But coming into this game, I didn't want to do too much. I had a lot of skills in my bag, so I just wanted to work on them all. One of them was defense. I ended up getting the block early in the game, but unfortunately we couldn't get the ball back and Josh Giddy hit a three. Now we were down in the beginning of this game. So on the next possession, I decided to get real aggressive, drove to the cup and I got the and one bucket. 100% from the line, man, y'all already know what it is. Now y'all know when I see the ball go through the hoop one time, I'ma get real aggressive. So I hit a pump fake and tried to go for the poster dunk. Almost missed it, but I got the roll in. I don't know about y'all, but I think that counts as a poster in my eyes. Toward the end of the first quarter, I played some good defense and I ended up getting my second block of the game. Now I don't know if our team didn't have enough firepower or OKC was just cold, but man, them boys was out there hooping and it took us hellas to get the game even close. And even though it was a struggle, I still tried to play my game. And y'all know that's getting the board and pushing the ball in transition. I tried to cross Chet up and I ended up getting a crazy up and under lay. I ain't gonna lie, I forgot to ask if he preferred Cheetos or Doritos, but I went to the cup and I got some lays. But unfortunately, that would be my last bucket of the game as OKC ended up beating us by 15 points. Ain't that kind of ironic, bro? But anyway, I wasn't tripping because I knew it was still a long season and a lot of room for improvement. Now I only ended up dropping 14 and five, but y'all chill on me, man. It was my first game. I was getting used to stuff. Now that boy Josh Giddy went crazy and had 14 boards, but uh, 
Shea dropped 42 points, and that was crazy too. Now our next matchup will be against K. Cunningham and the Detroit Pistons. And when I tell y'all boys this game was crazy, you better believe it. Started off the game right. Hey! I don't know why, but as soon as we started the warm-ups for this game, I already knew I was going to get a couple dunks tonight. Drove to the cup and got some barbecue lays. Hey, y'all rock with that, man? What's y'all favorite type of lays chips? Let me know in the comments. Now, even though the Pistons were looked at as a bottom tier team in the league, this game was neck and neck the whole time. It was really a battle from start to finish. But as y'all can see, I was trying to get my teammates involved. Even when I was pushing in transition, I was looking to move the ball up the floor and see if they could make something happen. As the game got closer to halftime, we had an 11 point lead, but I wanted to make a statement going into the half. So I drove to the cup and got a poster dunk on Kay Cunningham. Man, I had that boy Kay Cunningham looking like a roly poly after the dunk. That was embarrassing on top of what they already had going on. On our last possession of the half, I hit Kay Cunningham with a mean pop tart and I drove to the lane and got a crazy acrobatic lay over Wiseman. Now after half, I ended up sitting to the end of the third quarter basically. But when I came back in, I got right back to standing on business. Hey! At the start of the fourth, coach subbed me out again. But when I got back in, man, these boys had tied the game up. And it's crazy cause we had a decent lead when I got subbed out, but these boys just started hooping out of nowhere. They turned the sliders up. That boy Jaden Ivey hit a tough three and them boys had the lead. The crowd was going nuts. But this wasn't anything new to me. I mean, y'all been watching my whole life. I'd have been in this situation before and all I had to do was be smart, but also be aggressive. As I drove to the lane and got Kay Cunningham in some more foul trouble. After he fouled out, man, them boys was shook. I could already tell that the Pistons was frustrated and my teammates was hyped. They was just hyped that I was playing smart and I made the right decision. But I ain't gonna lie, man, the Pistons just dysfunctional, bro. It took dude hellas to walk off the court. They was just sitting there arguing for what felt like 30 minutes. But after he finally got off the court, it was time to hit some big free throws. And man, y'all already know what it is. When I'm at the line, say it with me. It's a hundred percent every single time. Y'all think I'll be lying? Damn, hold up. That rhyme scheme just kind of went crazy. I was spitting. But anyway, I ended up knocking down both free throws. You already know. And with 51 seconds left to go, we had a four-point lead. And the Pistons called a timeout to draw some things up. Coming out that timeout, DeMar and Zach was just telling me I've been cooking the whole game. And they was going to feed me the ball. And I just had to do my thing. So you already know I was ready to go. And might I say, the NBA is a crazy league. Man, we came off the inbound and we was playing some great defense. And Kelly Oubre hit the toughest shot I've ever seen in my life. And to be honest, we was just lucky the refs didn't call it an and one. But man, dribbling the ball up the floor, I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I was kinda nervous. But I still went and attacked Jay Ivey, and this happened. Hey! Got the crazy poster dunk to put us up three, man, and they immediately called timeout. I was hyped, man. I was screaming. I know the whole arena heard me. But Kelly Oubre came back and hit another tough contested three. What is up with these light skins hooping like this, bro? It's probably because it was some girls in the arena. With four seconds left to go, I tried to drive to the cup and get a lay, but it slightly rimmed out. And just like that, we was in overtime. And this was actually my first time being in an overtime game in my whole life. Coming off a pin down, I got my get back. Had to hit Kelly Oubre with a taste of his own medicine. Hey man, if his girl's in the arena, I'm gonna go crazy too. Forget what he talking about. Hey, don't tell Kalani I said that though. Hey! And after I caught that crazy lob, man, it pretty much sealed the deal. All we had to do was run the timeout that was left on the clock. And you already know when I'm at the line, it's a hundred percent every single time. I don't know why y'all think I'll be lying. <laughs> Better go ask Coach Ron. But you know that boy, he ain't hard to find. Even though I'm in the league, he still called me from time to time. <laughs> but I end up hitting the second free throw, man. And yeah, man, that was the icing on the cake. It was a hard fall victory. 
man, I had 40 points in this outing. I was going crazy. I think my speech in the fourth quarter helped. I just told the team, man, we blew a lead. Even though I built this, and I'll be damned if I let them tear it down. Cause we was not finna lose this game to the Pistons. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Sports Talk. Let me just start off by saying, man, oh man, you owe me that 100 because Corey Cass got drafted and called up. Now, Corey had dropped 40 in high school, 40 at Stanford, and 50 in the G League. And now, another 40 piece versus the Pistons last night. What do you have to say for yourself? All right, all right. For starters, I just cashed up you that $100. I'm a man of my word. Thank you, thank you. And I must admit, he did handle business when they came to get him drafted. Yeah, he did, he did. He shut me up right there, right then and there. Yeah, you're not lying. I'll forgive him his praise for that. Mm -hmm. But you talking about dropping 40 against the Pistons. Are you serious right now? It's the Pistons. They couldn't play defense on a parked car. Not to <laughs> mention, I could go out there and drop 40. He had overtime to do it. <laughs> Listen, I'm not going to praise him for that. Um, you know, we've seen this before. Uh, like I said, it's, it's nothing new. Um, you know, congratulations, I guess. Uh, but, you know, uh, I think he needs time, more time to develop. You know, you're out there just shooting oh. whatever. Oh. Shooting performance was not, not not all that. You know what I mean? He's just shooting anything he wants. Um, I don't think that coach should have put him in that game for that long anyways. But, you know, you know when you play oh, against him, the Pistons, it's like a G League team anyways. So. Okay. You out of your damn mind. The Pistons are still an NBA caliber team. He's literally the reason they won the game, offensive, offensively and defensively. I've been saying this since Stanford. He is a problem in the league. Listen, man, I, I just don't think you're getting it right. You think that you, you, he's very promising. He has a future in this league. I just don't see it. I'm telling you, the things matter. The things add up. He should have been sent back to the G League so he can wait this whole season out, get that performance, get some knowledge, be humbled before he goes out here and tries to shoot the storm up. And now the Bulls aren't going anywhere. Now, if they do decide to go send him back to the G League, I think that will be the best decision they have ever made. But hey, that's just me. Listen, man. Really, what were the Bulls going to do before they even picked him up? <laughs> let's let's be honest. They ain't You're been not lying. Since... You're not lying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they ain't been nothing since Jordan. So You're not lying. They're doing a good job by taking a chance, letting him develop, get a few games under his belt so that he can become the player that me and a lot of uh, America truly believes he could become. You know, I mean, like I said, it's just like you want to put your faith in a guy like this. Like, really? Like, you think he's a generational talent, the one that you want your kids to look up to? I mean, I just don't think he has any respect for the game and all these flashy dunks and all these step-back threes. And there's no fundamental in his game. This is nothing This is nothing like that. And so just comes the question, how long can he keep this up? And, 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 and let's not forget about his background. But we don't got to get into that. I know we got a lot to talk about today. We do. We do. So we're just going to end it with that. And just when I thought the NBA was getting rough, we had to go against Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, one of the two best ISO players in the league right now. Now, we faced an elite scorer with SGA in the first game, but I wasn't even really guarding them that much. But this game, I had to guard Luka and Kyrie. I had the assignment all night. Yeah! I low-key think me dunking on Kyrie kind of made him mad because after that dunk, he started going ballistic. I mean, I seen this dude highlights when I was younger and coming up, but going against him, it was a whole different experience. But I wanted to show him that I could hold my own, so I attacked. Yeah! Even though they had Kyrie and Luka on their squad, hey, we had Zach and DeMar DeRozan. And them boys was going crazy all game too. But I had to make sure I locked in on defense. I couldn't let Kyrie and Luka go crazy. And I ended up getting this crazy block at the end of the first quarter. 
At the start of the second, we were still down. I decided to get aggressive. I was not trying to Show lose. Showtime! Hey! Hey! But guarding this dude, Kyrie, was literally miserable. I see what they mean when they say the vets get all the calls that they want because it didn't matter what I did, bro. He was either going to score or they was going to call the foul for him. Boo! But Kyrie, you still got to step up, my boy. I was still trying to lock in on defense, and I ended up blocking one of his threes, recovered the ball, pushed it in transition, and I ended up getting a tough finish. I guess the refs don't like lays like that because that definitely should have been an and one. Throughout the game, I don't know what was going on, but it felt like I had to guard everybody, bruh, and everybody was trying to go at me for some reason. I guess you could say this was kind of a welcome to the NBA moment. But I still was aggressive, went right back at him, and got a crazy Harlem Globetrotter type lay in traffic. For some reason, the vet PG wanted to switch on Kyrie, and man, he got his ass cooked. I don't know why he thought that would be a smart decision, but we were still down by a lot. So I was just trying to get open any way I could. Ended up cutting to the lane, got an easy dunk off the pass from Zach. But the vet still wanted to guard him, and once again, he got deep fried. I mean, at some point he had to realize I was the better defender and I needed to guard him. I knew if we can go into the half down by at least less than 10, we had a chance. So I attacked as much as I could. But once again, OG wanted to guard Kyrie and I couldn't say nothing cause I was a rook. But once again, in the kitchen, wrist whipping like his stir fry, he got cooked by Kyrie again. But at this point, me and Kyrie was hot. So I figured if he attacking, I need to do the same thing. I'm the only spark we got going on offense. So I went to the store and got some more lays. But I knew I couldn't do it by myself. And just when I thought that, that boy DeMar DeRozan came in and got a clutch bucket. It's like he read my mind or something. Now we were still down by eight, but I think that boy Luca must have forgot I was a shooter. Boom! Four minutes to go in the third, I ended up playing some excellent defense on Kyrie. I got the rebound, and you already know I was pushing the ball in transition. Damn! Oh my God! On the next possession down the court, we ended up running a play for Zach. And of course, he got the corner tray ball. Corner three! Shout out to Peter Griff. But on the Mavs' next possession, Kyrie was being Kyrie once again. I mean, this dude was a complete headache, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. But at the end of the day, so was I. Drove to the cup, got a nice spin on Luca, and then I dunked it. And then we had a little bit of energy going after that. We was only down by six at this point, and I drove to the cup again. Hey! On the next possession, I ended up kicking it to my boy Kobe White, but unfortunately he missed it. But I followed up and got a crazy putback dunk. Man, I was giving us all the sparks we needed. Now we was only down two. But in the midst of focusing on Kyrie, I forgot they had Luka. And of course, Luka gonna do what he do as well. It's a two-headed monster on this team. But Luka is not known for defense. So I went straight at him and got an easy dunk to cut the lead down to three. And just like that, that was the end of the third quarter. And we was only down two. All we needed was to finish this game and we could have back-to-back -back dubs. And when I went to the bench, hey, they told me the same thing as last game, man. Just keep cooking and doing my thing. I was hot. But I guess coach trusted the vets more than me as I ended up not playing the rest of the game. And we ended up losing by five. And I ain't gonna lie, man. On the walk to the tunnel, I definitely felt like if I was in the game for at least a little bit of the fourth quarter, we could have won. Now Kyrie basically had 30. I mean, y'all saw he was cooking the whole game, but I had 41 and I was confused on why coach had sat me the whole fourth quarter. It didn't make sense at all. But hey, I'm a rookie, man. You gotta get used to this stuff. Moving forward though, we had a game against Ben Simmons and the Nets. And I ain't gonna lie, I was still ticked off about coach sitting me that whole fourth quarter. So this game I attacked. I had to show Ben Simmons, hey, I like Lay's chips. Every time I got the ball, I was pushing it and going to score. And right here, I ended up getting the and one bucket. Y'all see me putting the bag on right there, man. I was really in my Duffy. I was really everywhere this game, offensively and defensively. 
And by this time, it was game five, and I was getting used to the league. Hey! On the very next possession, Ben Simmons was dancing with the stars. But unfortunately, I couldn't hit the three. But I didn't give up on the play as I ripped Cam Thomas, and I got the easy layup. Man, I was super hype after that play, and it did not stop there. I ended up getting back-to-back -back steals as I ripped Ben Simmons and got the easy hey! 360 dunk. Early in the second, I cut back door and I got another crazy poster over Ben Simmons. I'm not gonna lie, I had to flex to the crowd after that one. We ended up getting the steal, we was pushing it in transition, and once again. Hey! I'm not gonna lie, at this point, I think I've done enough to be in the dunk contest already. I had like six in this game. And all in all, I was having a real dominant performance. And the dunks did not stop there. I got another back cut, and I got an easy one just like that. But man, like I told y'all, the NBA is a crazy league, man. No lead is safe. And these boys was cutting it close the whole time. So I had to just stay aggressive as much as I could. But come on, man, y'all knew this already. Coming close to the half, we was only up three, but I wanted to increase the lead even more as I drive in. Hey! But these boys would not go away, man. At the start of the third, they were still in it. But now, I was looking to find my teammates as I got the nice dish to DeMar DeRozan. If I wasn't hooping, I'd definitely be on the SWAT team. But y'all know we a two-way threat, man. Got the block and then got the easy bucket at the other end. And to be honest, that feeling that I had my second year at Stanford started to kick in. I mean, I was in the league with a bunch of pros, but it was feeling like these boys couldn't do nothing with me, man. I just I just felt different. As the clock ran down in the third, I channeled my inner Mamba and hit a crazy fader over Spencer Dinwiddie. It seemed like every time I touched the ball, it was a highlight after it. As I got the crazy pass to the corner and boom! And as y'all can see, coach finally ended up putting me in a little bit in the fourth quarter. But not for that long, though. With seven minutes left to go, I ended up sitting. But we did get the dub over the Nets by five. These close dubs be making me nervous, man. And I really feel like I should be in during the clutch. But hey, bro, I'm just happy we got this win. That's all I can say. Now, me and my boy Zach Levine was both hooping. He had 30 and I had 30. And if we kept playing like this, man, I think we had a real shot of being something in the league. Now, starting off the season three and three isn't bad, but it isn't good. It felt like we was just missing the key piece. Now, me and my boy Cam Reddish, we was good friends. And the organization actually ended up trading for him. And with him on our squad, we might have a shot at the title now. Stay tuned. the delivery my boy cc i see you right there big boy here's the deal y'all i don't really engage in hyperbole nearly as much as i engage in fact this brother is something <laughs> special yes he, he is. is something special he brought he brings out the dog and the rest of their team let me tell you something right now he is rapidly evolving into my favorite player in the nba He's got an NBA body. He's a man child. He's a Skywalker. He's got game. He's got heart. Listen to what I'm saying to you on national television. I see in the making Vince Carter, Kobe Bryant, MJ, Michael wow. Jordan. You hear what I'm saying to y'all? He is special. He ain't there yet in terms of the names I mentioned, but he's coming, and he is box office worthy of walking through the turnstiles to see that brother play. He is a showstopper. Yes, yes, yes. He just, uh, he's aggressive. You know, as, a young, as a young guy in this league, some some guys can be like you know nervous or whatnot. He has no no nervous at all. Like, he's aggressive. He's on full attack mode. And then uh, I mean mistakes are gonna happen. Obviously you know, he's young, but I love his aggressiveness. I mean he's just a different player. You know uh, he's special. I think he's very talented. You know his athleticism is 
above above everything you know he jumps out of the gym and but he's very talented and he's gonna be a great great player i mean he's just controlling the games you know always been an efficient player who can run the point guard spot um he's developed into a major scorer as well um you know he just plays with great pace out there plays with joy and, and enthusiasm and um you see him blossoming in front of our eyes i mean since college he's been on this trajectory you know as a basketball fan, you can't wait to see what it's like years going forward. Who would have thought my rookie season was already in the books? It's crazy because it feels like just yesterday I was telling y'all about my first G League game. And now we're getting ready for the playoffs. I never thought I would mean so much to this city. But it seemed like every time I walked up to the table to check in, the crowd started going crazy. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all, this season was full of plenty of ups and downs. I mean, I went through ups and downs in high school and even at Stanford, but this, it was a whole different beast, man. I feel like I've seen all there is to see. I done went against guys who was just as hungry as me, around the same age or even a few years older. And I also then went up against some of the GOATs, one of them being LeBron James. And even though some of these guys were my idols, I was ready to go mano y mano with them to show them I had no fear and I was coming for that top spot no matter who was standing in my way. I understand now that it's cool to make it to the NBA and get drafted, but man, you gotta work on your game so you can stay there. And I done came a long way. I wasn't giving this opportunity up for nothing. As a rookie, I knew some of the older players was gonna try to test me but I always showed them I wasn't going for none of that. Stood my ground every time. And even though I may have gained a few new rivals, most of the players always showed me respect. We are here to compete and win, but at the end of the day, the NBA is a brotherhood. Can't forget that. I couldn't believe how much we had came together as a team since we last spoke. I mean, adding that boy Cam Reddish to the team, it was a game changer, man. That dude was a sniper and he also played defense. Now, he may have not been the number one scoring option, but on some nights, he can definitely give you 30 if you want it. And every time we called his number, he definitely answered the call. But like I told y'all before, Cam was my dog, man. I messed with everybody on the team, but if I ever needed something, I'd go to Cam first. My boy DeMar was starting to look like the DeMar that was on the Raptors. I mean, people talk about his game, but seeing it in practice every day and in the game with him every day, man, this dude was different, bro. I could see why he was averaging 25 plus. And I ain't even got to tell y'all about Zach. He was easily playing like one of the best SGs in the league. I know y'all may know this already, but I had to talk about Jordan releasing my signature shoe, the CC1s. Hey man, it's still crazy seeing other players wear my own shoe. And I can't forget to tell y'all about how I made it to the All-Star game. Man, I was leading the East backcourt in votes. And not only did I make it to the game, I was a starter in it as well. Man, NBA All-Star weekend was crazy. Now, I know not everybody get to experience this in their career. So best believe I was enjoying it to the fullest. Now your boy was a rookie, so you know I competed in that Rising Stars game. And it was basically a key matchup between me and Wimby. I was getting my buckets, but I ain't gonna lie, he was doing his thing too. But man, everybody was telling me to have fun with it. So when I went in there, I put on a show. I was throwing it off the glass and all that. But y'all can't believe that was all that I did. Man, I had this crazy dunk that might be the best in Rising Stars game history threw it behind my back and then slammed it. I know y'all may be thinking what tempted me to try that. I couldn't even tell you. All I know is it had the whole building going crazy. I know most people don't tune in to the Rising Stars game, but hey, we was all some talented young rooks and I was enjoying the experience. Now when the All-Star game came around, I debuted my Iron Man CC1s. It was a part of my superhero colorway collection. Let me know how y'all feel about those in the comments. Before the game, I was talking with a lot of the vets, and some of them didn't even really care about the All-Star MVP too much. Hey! But I ain't care what they was talking about. 
I was going for that thing off rip. And at the beginning of the game, I had two dunks to make my presence felt already. A lot of people got their criticism about the All-Star game, saying sometimes it ain't competitive. But I don't care what they talking about, man. It was buckets everywhere on the court. And they was playing defense, too. And this game was filled with a bunch of dudes who've been competing at a high level for years. And it's crazy, because I was able to play at the same level they was playing at. I was just glad Giannis picked me up for his team. I got the hoop with him, Trey Young, Jamal Murray, KD, De'Aaron Fox, and a bunch of others. Everybody was acting up this game. That boy Luka even got a poster. I ain't even know bruh could get up like that. And me, I was attacking, getting my MJ on hitting fadeaway jump shots. Now you saw the crazy dunk I did in the Rising Stars game, but this game, I went even crazier. Hey! No sir, that ain't the only one. Hey! And one more for good measure. Hey! There was also a crazy play where I crossed up LeBron and then I hit the three right in his grill. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, by the time we hit the second quarter, I felt like I had the all-star MVP on lock. I mean, I was out there doing stuff I ain't even know I could do. Trying dunks I ain't never tried before in life. I had to take my boy Luca to a roll bounce audition because he was definitely on skates. And right after that, I drilled the mid-range jumper. I think me staring at him before I shot it made it a hundred times worse. I mentioned how I was playing with some dudes I'm normally competing against. So we tried to have fun with it, man. I was throwing lobs to Giannis and doing all kind of crazy stuff. And my brother from St. Louis, Tatum, he was going crazy too. He was on the opposing side, but I was definitely hyped for him. I was even cool with sitting on the bench for a while. I was just watching the show. Man, them boys was out there going crazy, throwing lobs, and De'Aaron Fox even dunked on LeBron. At one point, I remember De'Aaron Fox and Luca was going back and forth. Luca had came down, crossed him up, and got a tough lay. And De'Aaron Fox immediately asked for the ball, and he went down the court, and you know that man got his bucket right back, got a dunk. In the fourth quarter, we didn't even have a time limit. It was just the first to 118. And tied up at 116, I had Darius Garland on me, and I was looking for the game winning bucket. And I don't know why, but he fouled me. I guess he ain't been keeping up with my life documentary, so I gotta remind him. When I'm at the line, it's a hundred percent every single time. I don't know why he don't be watching. You see the views is getting right now? With the game winning free throw on the line, it was so loud in there I couldn't even hear. But all I had to do was step up, knock it down, and I was gonna get that boy Giannis another dub as a captain. And when it came down to it, I definitely delivered ball game. I was happy we won, but I low key didn't want the game to be over, man. It was a crazy experience. I was having hella fun. And all those crazy dunks ended up paying off as your boy took home the All-Star MVP. And after All-Star break, finishing out the season, I ended up securing that Rookie of the Year. And even though I wanted to celebrate a successful season, it was playoff time. I was born broke, but I'm dying rich. That's on my brother. I know plenty English. Every gun I told, I bet it stutter. Leave your face right in your lap. I find out that you undercover. Bitches lie right in your face like she for you, then fuck another. Taught these niggas how to flex and get up on they shit. Invest up in they self up in this rap. The playoff atmosphere in Chicago was like no other. It was super loud in that building. And as soon as the referee threw the ball up, I was locked in and ready to go. I knew in the playoffs that every possession mattered, but I was still going to attack. Hey! Winning the rookie of the year was cool, but if we had a chance to win the chip, I was definitely going to go for it. And at the start of the game, I had two dunks and I was looking to set the tone early. Playoff time is where the superstars step up. My boy DeMar DeRozan was looking to do just that. He had been doing it all season. As the second seed in the East, 
A lot of fans expected us to win this series pretty easy, but I'm not going to lie to y'all. The Knicks was a good team. They had Jalen Brunson and Julius Randle, and them boys also played some good defense. And their defense was part of the reason why I started to struggle. As the quarter went on, I was starting to make some rookie mistakes, no pun intended. And where would I find myself? Right on the bench. I had to quickly realize that this wasn't the time to be making rookie mistakes, but it just seemed like everything was not going my way after that. I was getting scored on with ease, which don't usually happen, and I wasn't able to convert some of my shots. On top of that, I was really starting to overthink things. I had a wide open dunk, and I pulled up for a mid-range, but luckily I got the board and the easy two points. And with 14 seconds left to go, I decided to take a break, go to the gas station, and give me some lays. I knew I had to lock in for the second half. I ended up checking my phone, and this voicemail changed everything. Hey babe, I know it's halftime and you probably won't get this message, but I need you to lock the f in. They cannot guard you at all, and you know this. Didn't you hear what Drewski said? You need to go stand on business. Try not to get too tired though. You're gonna need some energy for me when you get home. Love you. See you later. Now, I don't know if y'all boys heard of the Jordan Poole effect, but for this case, we gonna call it the Corey Cash effect. Cause after I got that voicemail, I started going ballistic. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, the Knicks didn't stand a chance. I had cheeks on the line, bruh. Couldn't no man stop me. I don't care if I gotta go up against Thanos or Goku. If I got cheeks on the line, bruh, they getting dealt with. If you see me fighting with a grizzly bear, you better go and help that bear, boy. But on a serious note, I ain't talking about an escape room when I tell y'all I was locked in. To be honest, I looked like a completely different player from the first half. I was just making the right play, and that included getting the and one bucket. And y'all already know, it's 100% from the line, so I ain't even gotta tell y'all. And as the third quarter went on, I started letting it fly. Boom! The momentum had finally shifted and everything was going our way again, including this crazy lob that Zach threw me. I ain't even catch it, but somehow it still went in. Things also started to go our way on the defensive end. We was getting steals and I was baiting them in the charges. And just by looking at the body language, I could tell the Knicks players was getting super frustrated. I don't know what y'all favorite score streak on COD is, but mine is the chopper gun. Boom! And with an 18 point lead in the fourth, it was not looking good for the Knicks. I don't listen to Kodak that much, but I'm definitely sniper gang. Boom! And just like that, we ended up taking game one at home. Everybody was lit, but in the back of my mind, I had to remember. The job ain't finished. Despite the rough showing in the beginning, I ended up dropping 36 and almost had a triple double. And now it was time for game two, but it did not go as I expected. Now Jalen Brunson definitely let it be known that he took last game personal. He came out in the beginning guns blazing. But see me, I never back down from a challenge. And y'all know that. So after that, I drove straight to the cup, and I ended up getting a crazy poster. I knew the defense was going to key in on my slashing. So to open things up, I started to get my tray ball going early. And as the quarter went on, it wasn't hard to see that this was turning into a one-on-one -on -one battle between me and Brunson. He would get a bucket, and then the next thing you know, I was at the other end getting the bucket. And to be honest, I wasn't even tripping. I mean, this is what playoff basketball was all about. Hey! But midway through the first, man, we was down. So I was trying to do everything in my power to make sure we got that lead. I know it started off as a 1v1 game, but forget all that. I was trying to get my teammates involved. Boom! And I told y'all, that man Cam, he show up right when you need him. And Zach, he was doing the same thing. Now the game was close, and it was super physical. I had to work for everything I was getting, including this tough lay. I don't even know how I hit it, but for some reason the Knicks will not go away, man. But I was playing my game, pushing in transition. Hey! 
you already know what I do. And I was also finding Zach. He was cooking as well, I'm not gonna lie. I told y'all, man, the way this dude been playing all season, y'all gotta consider my boy for the best SG in the league. And if not that, he at least top two. But one thing about the playoffs, when you play a team in the series, man, they start to figure out your tendencies. So I had to start getting some of my dirty work done in the post. And even though they slowed down my slashing in the half court, you already know I'm a nightmare in transition. And I ended up getting this tough and one bucket. But still, that didn't matter. Man, this dude Brunson was hooping the whole game. And as the fourth quarter went on, them dudes was holding on to that lead for dear life. And Brunson was making some tough shots. And for most of those shots, I was playing good defense. But hey man, sometimes it's just good D, but better O. I learned that can happen a lot in this league. And you gotta respect it, no matter how frustrating it is. And sadly, that was that. The boys ended up getting the dub at our crib. And now we had to go into game three and try to do what they just did. Now I had 53 and 14. And even though it's a crazy stat line, I wanted the dub. All I was focused on is getting my get back. I didn't care if it was Jay-Z, Spike Lee, or even Ice Spice in the crowd. All I knew is, New York, they was finna be disappointed tonight. Hey! Just like last game, me and Brunson was going back and forth early. Only difference is this time, I was way more motivated. I don't know about y'all, man, but they beat us at the crib. And me personally, I ain't going out like that. Hey! Starting off hot will be an understatement. Man, at the beginning of this game, I could not miss. I was getting and one lays, lobs, dunks, really everything I wanted. And you could see that the Knicks players was getting frustrated early. And of course, I was doing my thing on the defensive end. Boom! But like I said, Brunson was letting it be known that he wasn't going nowhere either. I had to run through like eight screens just to get to this dude. I know they had home court advantage and Madison Square Garden was rocking, but I ain't gonna lie, I was a force to be reckoned with as I got a crazy poster dunk midway through the second. And at this point, I still wasn't missing a shot. It seemed like everything I threw up was just going in and the bucket was feeling like an ocean. I was getting straight to the cup and punching it. Hey! I ain't gonna lie to y'all, I was starting to look like Stanford Corey Cash this game. I was hitting those step back meaties I used to hit when I was back on campus. And even though I was going crazy, we were still losing. And with a chance to tie it up, I called for the screen, got a step back, Boom! and I drilled it. I already hit a few of them things so you know the UAV was equipped it. Now, it's the chopper gunner time. It got to a point where I ain't even know what moves to do anymore. I kid you not, I was literally just throwing stuff up and it was going in. At halftime, I had 36 points and the storm continued. But it would be midway through the fourth when tragedy set in. I was playing defense on Brunson and then next thing I know, I turned around and he was on the floor in pain. We later found out that it was an ankle injury, but I ain't gonna lie in the moment, it looked bad. I mean, this dude couldn't even stand up. Me and Vooch even came over to see if bro was good. As a Knicks fan, I know it was heartbreaking. I mean, he was out there hooping, giving it everything he got. And just like that, his season was over with. I know I was the one playing defense on him, but it definitely wasn't intentional. But hey man, things got chippy after that. I went up for a layup on the next play, and they basically knocked me out the air on some Jordan rule type stuff. And on top of that, bro tried to bump me afterwards. I knew emotions was high, but I had to push him and let him know, hey, bro, this ain't going to be that. And instead of getting into a scuffle with bro, I just called ISO on him on the next play. And he got embarrassed. Hey! Just like that, we stood on business. And we got the dub by about 20. And I ain't going to lie, I felt bad for Brunson. He dropped 41 before he went down. And as for me, I ended up putting up 52 points. But hey, all that dirty stuff going on at the end of the game, man, it was just adding motivation. 
And I can honestly say, them boys poked the bear. Like I said before, everything that happened last game was just added motivation. I was about to go crazy. And at the start of the game, I had two back-to-back -back crazy dunks. And even though Brunson wasn't in the lineup, the Knicks were still fighting hard. But all in all, it just wasn't going to be enough. Especially when we was playing at the level we was playing at. And as the game went on, we easily saw that these boys couldn't do nothing with us. I mean, they had no answer for nothing we was doing. I was getting to the cup with ease. It seemed like every time I would dribble down the court, I noticed that the lane was wide open. Hey! And I already told y'all, I took that last game disrespect very personal. So coming into this game, you know I was going to let it fly. Boom! And then next thing you know, it was tray ball after tray ball after tray ball. And the backup PG for Brunson couldn't stop it. Boom! Got so bad that they coach had to call timeout a few times and bro had to blame his teammate for taking him to a bad dinner because every time he was guarding me it was nothing hey, to oh my God. and before i knew it man these boys was getting cooked by almost 30. it wasn't even no point of playing the game anymore everybody on the team was getting buckets and one buckets at that and midway through the third I asked coach if he could sit me out. I already knew the job was finished. Y'all should know I'm a man of my word. I wasn't playing no games with these boys. And just like that, we was one game away from closing this thing out. Now game five, they made it a lot more competitive, I ain't gonna lie. At one point, it was 100 to 101. I was dribbling down the court and I seen my man Cam in the corner and he do what he do best. Boom! With around two minutes left to go in the fourth, them boys was playing like they life depended on it. They really needed this game, and they wanted it too, I ain't gonna lie. Hey! All in all, it wasn't enough. I felt like the villain this game. And the way I was doing that backup PG, I probably wasn't gonna be allowed in New York for at least a year. And I'm pretty sure Ice Spice and Spike Lee didn't block me on the gram already. But I wasn't tripping. As I got a bucket with 1.2 left to go, and man, we knew it. That was it. We sent them boys to the crib, and we was moving on to round two of the playoffs. And I'ma keep it real, I was lit. But rest in peace to Kobe, man. Job not finished. Now this entire season, Trey Young was in the MVP conversation. I mean, that boy was averaging over 30 points per game. And coming into this series, he was not somebody that we needed to play with. We needed to lock in and focus on him defensively. Me specifically. But little did I know before this game, this was going to be one of the most historic playoff games ever. And y'all going to see why in a minute. But coming out, I was aggressive as I usually be. And the crazy part is, when coach was going over the game plan, one of the main things he said was do not get into a 1v1 battle with Trey Young. But sadly, that's exactly what happened. See, it all started after I got the steal on Trey Young, drove all the way to the cup, and ended up getting this crazy finish. I mean, it was kind of like a double clutch, up and under, whatever you want to call it. All I know is, it was sick. And y'all should know me by now. After I see a few buckets go in, it's basically over with for the other team. So after that crazy finish, I got the ball right back, and you already know what I did. I attacked my defender, and I ended up getting a tough and one bucket. For those of you who don't know, it's 100% from the line, even in the playoffs. But Trey Young would then show why he was an MVP candidate, hitting a tough three over two defenders. But I had to show him, hey, I may be a rookie, but I could shoot. Boom! 
And just like that, sadly, the 1v1 battle had begun. After I hit that three, he came right back down, hit a crazy shot right over me. I remember while I was dribbling down the court after that, I was wondering how he made that. And then on the next possession, he came down and hit a tough midi on me. Now at this point, I'm thinking, coach said don't get in a 1v1 battle, but hey, I gotta get my get back. And I got a bucket on DeJounte Murray. It wasn't Trey Young, but I still had to get my bucket. And don't get me wrong, Trey Young was gifted offensively, but hey man, I'm not gonna lie. When he was guarding me, I just realized I'm taller, I'm stronger, and I may be faster than Buddy. So I figure, why not? Go and kill. I'm not sure why their coach didn't switch the defensive matchups, but I mean, I was kind of the shortest player in the starting lineup, so Trey Young really had to pick his poison. I mean, you was either gonna be guarding me or somebody two inches taller like Zach Levine. But while I was guarding this dude, it felt like I was running through 80,000 screens, bruh. And dude was so lightning quick, by the time I got through the screens, he already had a step on me. I'm not gonna lie, it was a nightmare guarding this dude. But if anybody could do it, it's definitely me. At this point in the game, I had already hit two threes, so I already knew what time it was. They was gonna run me off the three-point line, and I was gonna have to do some dirty work in the post. But hey, if y'all remember back in my Stanford days, that's something I like doing. It's something I actually work on in the off-season and during the season. But as we got closer to halftime, I'm not gonna lie. It kind of felt like I was being selfish. I mean, I wasn't passing that much, but I also was scoring every time I got down the floor. But hey, man. The NBA is a different ball game. No one man can be the team by itself. I ended up falling asleep, got hit by another screen, and Trey Young hit another three. I'm not gonna lie, he was cooking at this point. And I was tired as a mug, but hey, I still gotta get my buckets too. And I thought last series guarding Jalen Brunson was bad, but Trey Young was equally as much of a headache as he was. I mean, this dude was just comboing up and hitting any contested shot he wanted. I don't know if y'all noticed, but basically for the last two quarters, it's only been me and Trey Young scoring. Me and him, nobody else. And I was acting up this game. I remember one play in the third quarter, man, I went coast to coast, and then I hit one of the most crazy acrobatic lays I've ever hit in my life. After focusing on attacking the rim for a little bit, I eventually finally got some more room for me to shoot some threes, and it got ugly. Boom! And after I hit that, on the next possession, the Hawks activated the Jordan rules as I drove to the basket and they basically almost knocked me out of the air. But I was able to finish the tough layup. It should have been an and one bucket. By the time the fourth quarter came, man, I was more tired than Lana Rose after she just got done doing the shoot. I'm talking about dog tired. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how I was still running full speed and able to block shots. I guess my leg power was just different. Hey! Now, if y'all remember, I told y'all this was a historic game, one of the most historic playoff games ever. Trey Young would come down and hit another three, and he just so happened to break the record for most three-pointers hit in a single playoff game. And then on the very next play, I blocked this shot, came down and got an easy dunk, and I broke the record for most points in a single playoff game. And I'm not gonna lie, I didn't notice until the next drive when I came down the court and I ended up getting a tough and one bucket. Man, after I got that bucket, I was looking around and the crowd was just going crazy. And I couldn't understand why. And then I looked up at the jumbo trying and there it was. I had 64 points, man. This was crazy. I couldn't even believe it. And even when I'm breaking records, y'all already know, when I'm at the line, it's a hundred percent every single time, man. Coach called a timeout so we could celebrate my accomplishment. And man, my teammates in the crowd was going crazy. I felt like a legend walking in that huddle. I couldn't believe I had broke my idol, Michael Jordan's record for most points in a playoff game. It was so crazy, man, it was surreal. Lucky for me, I'm glad it was only about a minute left to go in the game because after that, I could not focus, man. I tried to go up for a layup and I damn near missed the whole hoop. Luckily, I had got the steal on Trey Young and I just got an easy assist to cap the game off. And that was that, man. A historic playoff game. And on top of that, we ended up taking game one. But the crazy part is, this was not the only historic game during this series. Now, 
Now, going into game two, I told my teammates I was going to take a different approach. And whenever I saw them, I was going to hit them. I was only focused on passing this game. And sure enough, the very next game, I ended up breaking the record for most assists ever in a single playoff game. And I know y'all can probably tell by the first two games, but we went ahead and swept the Hawks. Got them boys out of there. And just after two playoff series, man, people was calling me a legend and the next Michael Jordan. It was crazy. But next up, we had a tough matchup against my brother from St. Louis, Jason Tatum. This was my boy, not gonna lie. But when we stepped on that court, it was no love. I'd be lying if I said the first game was a breeze. It was definitely a tight game the whole way, but I ended up ISOing and giving us the dagger to get the win in game one. But sadly, tragedy was strike a few days later. The team had announced my boy Vooch, our starting center, had tore his left MCL and he was done for the season. And sadly, he wasn't the only one that got hurt. Yeah, you read it right. The third injury of my career, and it happened at practice. And honestly, it wasn't even supposed to happen. Now, it wasn't a season-ending injury or anything, but I definitely ended up landing on my knee really awkwardly, and it made it way more painful to run and jump. I know y'all may think me playing a lot of minutes and me scoring a lot of buckets, getting a lot of dunks is cool, but eventually, man, that stuff will catch up to you, especially when it come playoff time. And now we had to move on without our starting center, and on top of that, I was not 100%. But hey, man. The job wasn't finished, so I just had to fight through it. Eventually, it was time for game three. And I'm not gonna lie, man, when the fourth quarter hit, my knee was feeling it. I was trying to push the tempo like I normally do, but I didn't have that same burst of speed. And after I got this layup over Tatum, I instantly started feeling pain in my knee. It was making it hard to do everything, man, but I had to fight through it. We needed this win. I know y'all remember when I played through my injury at Stanford, but this had to be a hundred times worse. I mean, at this point, we had played 90 something games on the season and I was just tired, man. After every bucket, I was holding my knee, bro. I was feeling it. I don't know if y'all knew, but back in the day, they used to call me light bulb because I definitely had the switch on me. With two minutes left to go in the game, the adrenaline was kicking in a little bit. I decided to ISO Porzingis and I went up for a baby dunk, <laughs> but it just caused more pain, man. Definitely a dumb decision. And with 52 seconds left to go, I made a rookie mistake. Not only did I give up a four point play, but I fouled out in a crucial moment, man. And just like that, the Celtics will end up taking game three at home and we took a L. I was definitely beating myself up about that loss. I felt like it was my fault. And even though I was injured, I got to fight through it and play better. And in game four, I did just that. At the end of the game, we had a sizable lead on the Celtics and all we had to do was finish. We was up by 11, I came down the court and went and got the easy layup over Porzingis. But my knee was definitely still feeling it. I mean, that thing was hurting, man, y'all don't even understand. And with about 35 seconds left to go, man, I decided to get in the mid range and channel my inner Michael Jordan with a post fade. I've been working on that shot for a while, man, especially since I got on the Bulls. And it was nothing but net almost every time. And just like that, we was up 3-1. And now we had a chance to go back to the crib in front of our home fans and close this series out. And with one more win, we'd be in the NBA Finals, man. Job ain't finished, though. Now, game five wasn't similar to the other games. I mean, y'all got to understand, it's different when you got that home court advantage. And by the time it was about 40 seconds left to go in the game, I slowly started to realize that I was about to be an Eastern Conference champion. I just had to seal the deal. And then on the final play, I hit Jalen Brown with a mean move. And then I drove in and I yammed it right over Derek White. Hey! What a way to go out. Of course, when the game going on, y'all know I'm locked in 24-7, but I ain't gonna lie, man. I was starting to get a little emotional. Everybody in here that's watching, they know everything I've been through. And for me to make it to the NBA Finals, it's just crazy. And as soon as I saw that clock hit zero, man, the whole team was hyped. The Bulls had been in the Finals for the first time since Michael Jordan was there. 
Now, it's two sides to every story. Now, you can see that we was hyped, but on the other end, man, them boys on the Celtics, they was heartbroken. You could see it in their eyes. Some of them was even crying. I respected a lot of guys on that team, I'm not going to lie, especially Tatum. But in this league, man, when it come down to these playoffs, it's kill or be killed. Eat or be eaten. The fans was going crazy as I hoisted up that trophy. And man, after that, it was time for the NBA Finals. We made it. It felt like everything was in slow motion during that first tip-off. We finally here in the finals. And everything I worked for, everything I've been through, it all comes down to this series. And we need four more wins to seal the deal. So you already know, coming out the gate, I wanted to be aggressive. Drove all the way and got the and one bucket. The finals edition. But you still know it's 100% from the line every time. It don't change. Now the interesting thing about this series, during the entire playoffs, I was averaging about 28. And Zion, he was averaging 30. So really, this was a battle between two dudes, two young guys, who was becoming superstars in the league fairly fast, especially me. Y'all see all the white t-shirts, so shout out to Peter Griffin. As I floated to the corner, and ended up hitting the corner three. After that shot, man, I knew them boys was in for a rough night. In the first quarter, I had this crazy play. I ended up getting the mean chase down block, channeling my inner LeBron. And then Drummond gave me the ball, and I went coast to coast and took a trip to Dunkin' Donuts. Hey! One thing that the playoffs taught me is every possession matters. And you gotta be able to make an impact on both sides of the floor, which is why anytime I missed a shot, I was looking to get a steal. And often, I'd be wide open for an easy fast break dunk. I had been working on being a two-way player since Stanford, and now I was finally starting to see it translate to the league. And not only that, it was translating at an elite level. Now I'm guessing most of you watching this, y'all rock with cookies and milk. Now I don't know how y'all do y'all cookies and milk, but me, I prefer to dunk mine. Hey! As a kid, my favorite cartoon character was Swiper the Fox. And my favorite game was Bomberman. Boom! Man, I hit that first three, and I ended up catching fire. On the very next possession, we got the board. We was pushing in the transition, and then I end up hitting another one. Boom! I told y'all early in the first, I started feeling it. The crowd was going crazy. <laughs> we had all the energy. And I ain't gonna lie, man. On the very next possession, I shot a heat check. And of course, that thing was nothing but net. I had three back-to-back-to-back -back -back threes. I was on fire, man. Couldn't nobody stop me out there. To be honest, I don't think the Pelicans were ever ready for our defensive pressure. I mean, every time I missed a shot, it seemed like I was getting the steal super easy. And then it led to an easy transition bucket. As the second quarter went on, it just seemed like them boys didn't even want to guard. I mean, I was getting everything I wanted. Easy buckets in transition. And if I couldn't get that or the three-point shot, I'd be looking to post up and get the easy finish at the rim. I also did look to drive and kick a lot. Since they were keying in on me a lot on defense, some of my teammates would just be wide open in the corner every time I drove. Boom! Now Zion, he was scoring here and there, but he was fairly quiet this game. That is until we was approaching halftime, and man, this dude did Zach Levine something filthy. He just rose up and bodied that boy with ease. It was one of the craziest dunks I've seen. I mean, I knew he had bounce, but that dunk was crazy. And I ended up getting a breather right before halftime. And it was feeling like this game was already won. We was up by like 20 already. Almost midway through the third, man, I ended up turning the whole arena up. Got the board, pushed in transition, and ended up getting the and one bucket. I had to dap up my boy Zach Levine, and just like that, 
Game one was in the books. He was going to walk away with a dub. Now, game two was kind of different. In the beginning of the third, man, them boys had the game close. But for some reason, I just caught fire out of nowhere. Ended up hitting a crazy off-balance three. And man, on the very next play, it got wicked for them boys. Drove to the lane, rose up on Zion, and I dunked that motherfucker. Make sure y'all say a quick prayer for that man, because that was just dirty. And in a matter of like two minutes, I single-handedly had increased our lead to like 12. I know them Pelicans boys was super pissed. And then on the next play, I ended up getting a double screen, and I caught a windmill lob. I guess you could say my knee was back to normal, because I came down again, and I got a reverse lob shortly after that. The head coach of the Pelicans had to call a timeout after that one. I ain't gonna lie. And with about five minutes left to go in the fourth, I drove on CJ McCollum, got him in the post, and got the easy dunk that will seal the deal for this game. And just like that, man, we took game two. And now we was just two games away from completing the ultimate goal, a championship. I probably remember game three the most clear out of every one. As soon as I checked in in the third quarter, I drove to the lane and got a poster right off a rip. I wasn't even going to dunk it, but when I seen Larry Nance coming over, I figured I had to. That boy was a shot blocker, and I was not trying to get embarrassed, so I had to go up aggressive. But for the first time in this series, they had the lead at the beginning of the third. So unfortunately, we had to play the comeback game, but I had full faith that we could get it done. And this is playoff basketball, man. If you give a team too much of a lead, you can consider yourself gone in the water at that point. And them boys was putting up a fight. That boy CJ McCollum had me running through screens and he hit the tray ball and basically said, hey bro, we here, we ready to get a game. But I expected that. Ain't no team just gonna lay down in the playoffs. And I ain't gonna lie, I was kinda mad Mariah Mills chose Zion over me. So on the next play, I had to show her why she made a mistake. Sent that boy to the gulag. If you know, you know. Hey, Mariah, if you listening, I will not be renewing my browser subscription this month. It's cooked. And to keep it a buck, if I wasn't playing basketball, I'd probably be on the SWAT team. Not even gonna fake it. And as we headed into the fourth quarter, man, this thing was looking like a heavyweight fight. We would get a bucket, then they come down the court and get a bucket. We would get a stop, then they come down and get a stop. We throw a punch, and man, they throw a heavy ass punch right back i don't think people understand how hard it is to win a playoff game on the road i mean it's an uphill battle i mean they got the energy of their fans on their side and it's home court advantage i had to channel my inner michael jordan again as i hit the post fade on zion that was quickly starting to become one of my signature shots with two minutes left as they had a two-point lead that boy cj mccullum hit a contested three right in my face I knew we had to score quick, so I immediately got the ball, and I was looking to attack. And I don't know what store CJ McCollum go to, but the one I go to got barbecue lays there. But sadly, that wasn't enough. And with 20 seconds left to go, I ended up fouling out again in the playoffs. And just like that, man, they took game three. And going into game four, they had all the momentum in the world. Game four was a similar situation, only this time, toward the end of the third, we had a three-point lead, and I was going to do everything in my power to make sure we get this dub. I was doing what I do best, which is pushing the ball in transition, and I ended up getting an and one bucket. Playoff edition, 100% from the line, you ain't new here. Don't get me wrong, if we were to lose this game, we most likely have home court advantage and win the next game if we went back to Chicago. But I ain't gonna lie, if we did that and won the game in Chicago, the next game we'd have to come right back here. So to me, this was a must win. We had to get this dub. As the game went on, man, I ain't gonna lie, I was getting kinda hungry. And at first, I was gonna get a meal from Dunkin' Donuts, but I decided to get some chips instead. But all in all, we were standing on business. We had about a 13 point lead, and then this lob right here, would definitely seal the deal. And we would end up taking game four in style. Hey! 
NBA coach, they definitely need a timeout. But it was too late. It ain't nothing you could draw up. Like I said, if you give a team too much of a big lead in the playoffs, you going in the water. And just like that, we would take game four. And we had a chance to close out at home. Job not finished. Now this game did not go how we expected at all. Toward the end of the third, man, we found ourselves down by 20. And it didn't look like the Pelicans was looking to slow down at all. I mean, we knew this could be a closeout game, but for some reason we started flat. And I know y'all probably won't believe this, but up until that bucket, I had only had two points in the game. <laughs> yeah, I know, crazy. And it seemed like the Pelicans were just hitting every shot, contested or not. It didn't even matter. It seemed like everything was just going their way. They was hitting shots and getting whatever foul calls they wanted. And the whole time I was aware of the circumstances. If we was to somehow lose this game, we got to go back to their crib and they got the momentum. And we could also lose that game as well. So then we have to come back here for a game seven. So I then decided, man, I got to put it all on the line. It's going to take a heroic effort to erase this deficit but I'ma try, by any means necessary. I was trying to do my thing on both ends of the floor. All we needed was to get stops. And after we got those stops, hey, we getting the board and we going. We trying to score as quick as possible to create more possessions for our team. Erasing a big deficit always starts with defense, but you gotta be able to convert on offense as well. And for some reason, I was locked in, man. Especially since they had a smaller guard on me. So you already know that was baby food. I was getting to the cup at will. But the Pelicans was not laying down at all. Every time we went on the run, they were going to run. I mean, this is the best they had been playing all series. They knew if they got this game, it would be a big momentum shift. But we couldn't give up, we had to fight. Hey, it ain't over until that clock hit 0-0. And it was six minutes left to go. We was trying to do as much as we could. I knew if we can get the lead close to 10 before the five minute mark, we have a chance. So on the very next possession, I called for a screen and I drove and I hit one of the most difficult layups probably in playoff history. And after it dropped, man, I was hyped. They coach had to call a timeout, man. Our crowd was hyped. We were starting to get some momentum going. But going into that huddle, I ain't gonna lie, I was exhausted. This is the hardest I've ever played in my life, but hey, we had a championship on the line. So by any means necessary, I gotta do what I gotta do, no matter what it takes. Man, when we came out that timeout, the crowd had probably been as loudest as I've heard it all season. And man, we was making it happen on the defensive end. So you already knew what that meant. I had to get to the cup at will. It seemed like the whole starting five was locked in. Normally I'm the one getting the big stops, but everybody was. And I ended up being wide open for a dunk that would cut the lead down to only nine. We was in striking distance, man. With two minutes left to go, we got another stop. And we was getting nothing but twos, but we had to start getting some threes to go in. And next thing you know, boom! I hit one of the biggest threes of the game. I remember the next play, I was trying to match up on CJ McCollum, and out of nowhere, Cam Reddish got the steal. Pushed it in transition, and got the easy assist to DeMar. With about a minute left to go, Brandon Ingram hit a tough shot. And man, I realized, hey, we running out of time. I gotta make something happen. Came down the court, I sold CJ. Boom! Hit another big three. Coming down the court, we had a chance to make it a single possession game. I had CJ on me again, hey, so you already know I had to ISO him. He couldn't stop me, and I ended up getting a tough bucket to cut the lead down to only three points. The crowd was hella hype. They got a bucket on the other end and we needed to get one. My boy Zach missed it, but luckily Drummond came and got the clutch put back. And with 25 seconds to go, we got the stop we needed. Hey, it's a three point game. All we needed was a three I pulled and it wouldn't go. My boy Drummond got the rebound. I got CJ on me. So you already know I was about to ISO again. Pulled another one, missed it. And DeMar DeRozan got the clutch rebound and he got the ball right back to me. With only four seconds left to go, I had to shoot. And this one was for all the marbles. If we lost, we was going back to their crib. If we made it, we would have another chance in overtime.
at the buzzer. Your boy hit the clutch three over CJ McCullum and the crowd was going crazy. It was not time for us to go home yet. We had a chance to go into overtime and make something happen. I had the crowd on my side. Hey, it felt like nobody could beat us in that moment. Man, my heart was beating through my chest, but we still had a game to play. Five minutes left to go, my boy Cam Reddish. Boom! Came in clutch to start it off, hitting the big time three. And on the other end, I got a mean block on CJ McCullum. And we ended up recovering, pushing it in transition. And DeMar DeRozan hit the tough mid range. Now we up five. But we still got two minutes left to go. We got to keep fighting. And my boy Cam Reddish got a clutch block. I'm pushing in a transition. And hey! at that point, we were starting to feel it, man. But we got to finish. Called the ISO on CJ McCullum and got another crazy dunk. The energy was on our side, man. We had to keep the ball rolling. A minute and a half left to go. Andre Drummond got the clutch steal. I was running. I ain't see nobody in front of me. Hey! And I got the clutch dunk. After that play, it felt like it was an earthquake going on in the arena. The fans could sense it, and I could too. But the game ain't over yet, man. We got to finish. And with less than a minute to go, Andre Drummond ended up picking up a foul, sending Valanchunas to the line. During them free throws, I was feeling all kind of emotions, man. Everything I went through was all for this. I'm finally here. We a couple seconds away from winning a championship. And with nine seconds on the clock, man, we ain't do nothing but pass the ball around and just wait for that mug to hit zero. And just like that, we made it. NBA champions. All the hard work, all the trials and tribulations, all the doubters, all the people who said I would never be nothing, they couldn't say nothing to me now. I was an NBA champion. A few years ago, man, I was kicked off the high school team. And now, I had completed the biggest achievement at the biggest stage of them all. And not only that, I helped bring the seventh championship back to Chicago. We all know what Jordan did and now, I was sitting up right there with him in the rafters as a champion. Everybody on the team was flooded with emotions, from DeMar to Zach. Hey, I was happy for my boy, man. Zach had been through a lot. He could finally say he was an NBA champion. I never thought in a million years this is how my rookie season would end. My life had did a complete 360. Y'all remember where I started? And now, man, I was in the NBA history books, the Chicago history books. And now, I think it's safe to say, I'm no longer underrated. NBA champion and finals MVP. I was on top of the world, man. Hey, but as y'all know, it's my life. So as soon as it seemed like something going good, something come out the blue, and it's a tragedy.